So we missed our flight. Yeah. Because of weather and accidents. It was like four or five accidents on our way here. So we missed it. But we're still gonna get down to New Orleans. It's just gonna be a lot later. And uh, I'm still not used to talking to a camera myself because, you know, you see people go behind you and they're like, what's that guy doing? I don't know, it's still awkward for me, but I'm trying to get used to it. It's pretty cool. I'm a vlogger now. They did upgrade us to first class. And they redid our tickets, which I've never ridden first class. And it's kind of been on the bucket list. We're gonna get to be able to check that off. But now we wait, I'm gonna get some food, and then uh, get on this uh, plane, first class style, and get down to Nala. Lunch. What are you gonna do? We've had a long morning. Um, I'm definitely ready for the Snob Creek and some fries and to be in New Orleans because it has been a long morning trying to get there. That would be awesome if we could get there. Uh, but hey, you know, we're hanging out anyways. So I'm like, now we can just chill here and, and drink some bourbon. This is our pregame for the pregame. We're going to a burlesque show later. That's gonna be awesome. Uh, so that's really just like the end game here. Get, a, get out of this airport, get to this burlesque show. So, onward. We're gonna miss our Four Roses dinner because of this, but we will get to the Jim Beam burlesque show, so that's cool. Uh. Changing the gate on us. It's just been one of those days, you know? One of them days. Everything's changing, going wrong. But we're gonna get there. I'm we're gonna get there. At this point. Back on it. I'm getting on this plane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting to New Orleans. I'm getting there. We finally made it on our flight. Seven hours later. <laughs> Adios. It's okay. We're just happy to be here. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we've been through three seminars so yep. far. Yeah. Tell us. Um, let's see. We started the morning. Um, we actually went to the Silverback. We went to that one for a few minutes. Check that out there. The only other mother-daughter distilling combo besides Jeff the Creep. Yeah. Um, so we went to that for a few minutes. Then we went over to Adam Harris. We went there last year. He's great with Beams and Tori. He did the Uncut Bourbons um, seminar for tastings. Mm -hmm. He liked to put these together in small batches. So he started in 1988. He began with his namesake bourbon, Booker's, that we'll get to later. And that was the first small batch bourbon. Then we had Michael Veach give us a history lesson about the early days of bourbon. So he decided that uh, he would reuse a barrel and had salted fish in it. I don't care how much you burn the inside of that barrel, it's still gonna make the whiskey taste like salted fish. Bourbon does not taste like salted fish. 
Some snacks, maybe, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then lastly, uh, before lunch, we did the mixology, the bourbon mixology yeah. class with Bobby G, Bobby G, who has won some Guinness Book World Records. Fantastic bartender, super funny, very humorous, and he had some great pro tips for us. I got this Knob Creek Rye leftover. Yeah, he wants it. I'll give it to you in a minute. And what's going on down here? Oh, we got some cocktails. We got some Drink More Bourbon cocktails coming in. Uh, I think these are all Jim Beam products. We got some Knob Creek Rye here. We've got our Welcome Cocktail, a mint julep, a whiskey sour. This is some vermouth. We've got some other things coming. There's a full bar up there. That's pretty cool. They're gonna do some mixology lessons, so. But there's a lot of different ways of shaping. You got the washing machine. <laughs> the Dantulio shaker. <laughs> AKA the Al Capone shaker. <laughs> Your fingertips don't sweat. So what we want to do, the reason that we want to do this is we want to open up the aromatics of the mint. So all you do is, in your fingertips, just take that mint and spank it on the rim. Yeah, we have a, a little bit of a break before our next seminar, so we're going to yeah. go finish this, mm -hmm. check that out, yep. and Selfie. get to our next seminar. <laughs> Sarah's trying to make a reservation for brunch on Sunday and not having any luck. No luck. No Everywhere's luck. booked. Yeah, people love brunch in New Orleans. And they pretty much laugh at me when I'm calling. Like, huh, you silly girl, there's no brunch for you. He would, we'd be up at the fermenting room and he would stick his head over the working fermenter and he didn't do it in the distillery. If it's working good and there was CO2's coming out with pretty, pretty heavy, you know, and he would hold his breath come back and say, damn it, smells good. And then whoever was on tour would stick their head over it like a big whip. It would knock your socks off. And a lot of times it would stand your back. And I said, why do you do that to people? He said, they'll never forget the tour I gave them. <laughs> For a while, I wanted to be a lawyer. But given our family's track record with college, I figured once I found out that you had to go four extra years, it probably wasn't right for me. But I always thought it was cool to to, to get paid to argue, I thought that would be kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the seminars from day one down. We just had the seminar with Fred and Freddie, no, of Jim Beam, and now we're gonna run back, we're gonna get changed, we're gonna go to the Grand Tasting. Ten-year-old, weeded Mashville bourbon. Uh, it's the youngest of the Van Winkle line. It's Friday, grand tasting, a lot going on here, having a great time, the VIP hour was amazing, got to try some stuff that I didn't think that we were going to try, we sure did, and it was great. barrel bourbon in the 19th century so they were putting it into the barrel anywhere between 90 and 105 proof I was here last year for the inaugural festival um, and this year's festival is already better and for two for two reasons one my session is not at 9 a.m. <laughs> That was tough. I want to I want to really thank these folks here in the front row who were two of the three people who made it out at 9 a.m. Um, now bourbon, we're so fortunate, you know, especially in Kentucky because we have some very creative master distillers, and it truly is up to the master distiller to determine what they call the secret recipe. You know, the mash bill. You might hear people talk about mash bills. All right, right. Thank you. you like that? So spicy. Rinse really nicely, it's and so then spicy. we're gonna go to. The caramel Which is truffle. Really good. Okay. It's really good. And this is the explosion. So okay. 
fabulous. And then we'll delicately express the peel. Pass these around. Check that out. Top of the class. It's That's awesome. a real nice stuff. <laughs> Now remember, I have this. <laughs> you know, I think one of my best memories of Jimmy is when I actually started working there. And I grew up around all the other master distillers. It was such a small community. They were all best friends. About three years in, Booker No came out one afternoon. And man, when those two guys got together, you had to hide the liquor. But they kept drinking and they kept drinking. And they were drinking white dog off the steel, and they were in my dad's office, and it was like, Booker looked at my dad, and he asked about another distiller's whiskey. They just changed their process. And Booker looked at Jimmy, and if anybody ever got to meet Booker, he was just a wonderful man. Think of Freddie Noah if you've ever met him in times and times four. That's what Booker was. He looked at my dad, and he said, by God, Jimmy, he said, what do you think about so-and-so's new whiskey? My dad sat back there in that chair and he said, it's pretty good. Booker said, you lying son of a bitch, it ain't worth a damn. <laughs> <laughs> My dad just started laughing. That's when I knew, you know, we were all so close that they could talk about each other and, you know, but still having respect for them because, you know, Jimmy would have never said good or bad. The seminars are done, right? Yes. Seminars, seminars are, are done. done. day two. Day two. About to go to the grand tasting. Day two. Yeah, we gotta get a lift. We're gonna get a lift. We're gonna go get a lift. So we're trying to get to the grand tasting early tonight. Um, and by early, I mean on time. Because last night we were just a few minutes late. When we showed up, they were pouring William Rue Weller, Thomas H. Handy, Weller 12. They were pouring Happy 23. Uh, supposedly. Supposedly. We didn't see it. We missed it by like 10 minutes. Which, so today we're on a mission to get that. Um, we did get some Rip 10, that was great. Uh, Mictors had their 10 year old out, uh, Wild Turkey Decades. Just a ton of stuff and you have one hour to try these. So it's like you have to choose wisely, you know? You really it's have VIP to hour. Yeah, VIP hour before the, um, before the general public gets in. We're on a mission to get that. Hi. Hey, just oh, you guys can go right ahead. Perfect. Oh, awesome. This is for 23. Got the last of it. That's it. I don't even think I've ever had this before. So this is a first. Um, yeah. Ooh. Wow. It's so smooth. And it's way sweeter than I expected it to be. Like, not too sweet, but than I expected it to be for that age. But, I mean, it's really good, but is it the best thing in the world? Uh, I'll have to report back on that. I wouldn't pay what secondary is asking for, but it's really good. The William LaRue Weller that we had yesterday during VIP, I feel like was uh, is better. Nice and rich, a little oaky, a little leathery, but overall, it's good. Got into the 23, it was gone in three minutes. Uh, and it's done by the consumer and people that are really passionate about whiskey and we come out on top uh, it's pretty I mean it's we're proud there's no doubt about it but there's a lot of damn good whiskeys out here that are probably almost as deserving but we'll take this one obviously the Elijah Craig barrel proof the B517 was whiskey of the year for whiskey advocate and to have the C917 uh, we've always said it wasn't just about you know the batch B517 it's really about the release of the barrel proof yeah. and this is just more validation that that line is pretty solid and we're kind of good at picking that stuff out but uh, you know today's consumers have an affinity for some of the higher proof releases uh, but that being said it's still got to be it's got to carry the same flavor profiles that people enjoy and maybe some of our lower proof stuff just amped up a little bit you can't lose that baseline flavor and I think that's one of the things we've been able to prove with the Elijah Craig cast strength is we're pretty consistent with this. The proof might vary a little bit, but 
the overall profile is very consistent and winning this award just more validation that we're doing something right. So it's Sunday, the festival's over. We have been walking around kind of near the French Quarter all morning. We had brunch, that was delicious, at a place called Sylvain. Uh, there's a downpour <laughs> right now, so we're hiding under this overhang. I'm um, gonna go to a carousel bar, which sounds pretty cool. Oh, I'm getting misted. And uh, let's see, then we're gonna go to this place called the Avenue Pub. They have a lot of good private selections. We're gonna do a live stream, and then, I don't know, maybe we'll go to the casino, maybe we'll go to dinner. Maybe we'll drown out here. I'm not really sure, so I guess we'll see. I think it might rain today. I don't know, what do you think? Chance of rain. So of course we ended our trip at Harrah's. Of course. If you know me, you know that I like casinos. <laughs> <laughs> I actually won a little bit of money. Mm. A little bit. You lost, I actually a, little lost bit. a little bit. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. I'm the winner. Favorite moments. Let's Ooh. let's do seminars first. Favorite okay. seminar. Um, my favorite seminar, while there were a ton of awesome ones that I really enjoyed. Um, I'm gonna have to say something that was new and very different and refreshing this year versus last year was the Peggy Stevens uh, food pairing. Mm, uh, yeah. Yeah. You're still getting over that uh, spicy. Uh, yeah, that, I'm uh, still working on getting over that uh, spicy Korean barbecue. Korean barbecue, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was spicy. But I'm so. gonna say my favorite was the bourbon mixology with Bobby G. Oh, that was a close. That and Adam Harris. I mean, you can't go yeah, wrong. Adam I Harris. love them. Now, what about at the Grand Tasting? What was your favorite thing that you put in a, put in the glass? Well, so that's tough because like I like to think about what is something that was new that I was introduced to there that made me excited. And I had never gotten to try the Yellowstone limited edition bottle before. So I did get to try that. And uh, I believe his name is Steven mm -hmm. there. Steven he, Fonte? Yes. He is amazing. Very hilarious. So he entertained us for a little bit while we tried that. I liked that pour. That was great. Mine, I definitely liked the antique collection, so the William LaRue Weller. But you know, one thing I was most surprised about was the Jim Beam Master Collection. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, the, like it's a $200 bottle, it's finished in some other type of cask. And I'd always kind of held off on it because I was like, ah, you know, that's uh, the price and it's your master, or, I'm sorry, not master's collection, masterpiece, Jim mm -hmm. Beam Masterpiece. And your masterpiece is, is finished in a non-bourbon barrel. I was like, ah, oh, come on. But I tried it and it was really good. Mm -hmm. It was really good. So that that was not my most favorite thing, but it was something that I was um, the most glad that I mm -hmm. tried. Much like the Conviction bourbon. Oh yeah, uh, from that was Southern cool. Southern Grace Distilleries. Yeah. For being so young, it was one of the best mm -hmm. younger tasting bourbons that I've had in a long time. That's cool. Overall favorite, I don't know. You know the the. Master's Keep from Wild Turkey is always a always. favorite. Glad to have that again. Oh, the Michters, they did the 10 year in the toasted barrel. That was yeah. fun. Yeah, it was all I mean, good. it's tough. It's a tough call. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, those are some of our highlight moments. Also, there's a restaurant called Cavan and they did mm. uh, shrimp, shrimp and, and grits. grits. And I probably ate like five or six little tasting bowls of it. <laughs> I just couldn't get enough. And each night I beelined for that one. It was so good. Yeah. Um, and we may have, uh, I don't know, um, watching the video, it kind of made it sound like we were really selling the VIP hour, and we, we are, because it's amazing, but once the VIP hour is over, 
just want to make sure with your stress that there's still lots and lots of good bourbon there. Yeah, it's amazing. So if you don't buy the VIP ticket, you're still, still going to get to try amazing stuff. Just not stuff like the Pappy 23 or the right. BTAC or the Michter's 10, but still some really amazing yeah. stuff. And we still got to try stuff that we hadn't tried hadn't before tried. Mm -hmm. in the non-VIP hour. But the VIP hour is where it's at. I'll if just you say that. plan to be there on time, yeah. then it's worth it. If yeah. you don't plan to be there on time either day or both days, then I think maybe it's not as worth it because there's so many limited offerings and you can only do them within an hour and some of them are gone very quickly. You have to pick. Like if you wanted that Pappy 23, you, you had, had to, to go be there. straight to there mm -hmm. and on get time. that first. So all in all, great time. You should do it. And it looks like they've already posted next year, mm -hmm. March 20th through the 22nd. Yep, of so 2019. Of yep. 2019. We hope to be there. It they, just keeps getting better. Each year better. has gotten better. And, yeah. it, and it was already great from where it started. So right. I'm just excited to see what happens next year. Likewise. So that'll do it for us. Hope to see you guys there in 2019. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay. And until next time, drink more bourbon. So yeah, we ended it, ended our trip is what I meant to say, I tried to say. <laughs>